God is not divine. Oh, he's divine. A form of God, godliness, qualities of God's being, divine. When I, when I start to partake in, 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 in the very things that God means for us to do, divine means he has a strategic, strategic place for us to be, and he has a strategic route for us to go. The problem is we don't like to go the route that God wants us to go. We all are used to getting on the expressway. When you get on the expressway, you miss things. When you're on the expressway, you go by cities, but you never pass. You pass by the city, but you don't go through the city, so you never know what's in the city. So people will say, that's a beautiful city. Charlotte is beautiful. You'll say, oh, I went by there and passed, and I passed it on our way up 95. I went through Atlanta on 7585, but I didn't stop. I just passed through there. I saw all the downtown, but, but you didn't get to experience it. See, divine direction means exactly what God has preordained, listen, you to do. God has already given you a blueprint of your life before you were born. Here's the, here's the problem, listen. You don't want to oblige God and what he has already put in place for you and the resources he has already prepared for you. In other words, God don't want you to be a failure. You're a failure when you start getting outside the line. You know, when you start going against the law here, you get ticketed. Yeah, you get ticketed down here. You, you get a ticket if you're going too fast, you get a ticket. If, if you're going too slow, you get a ticket. If you don't use a blinker, you, you, you get a ticket. You get a ticket for every, in, other, in other words, I'm getting charged when I go outside the boundaries of the law. Well, what do you think happens when God has given you divine direction and you go outside of that? God said, go right, you go left. God said, shut up, you, let, you start screaming. God said, be strong, you start crying and giving up. You, you, you wilter like a beautiful flower once was. And heat caused it to wilter. That's what we start doing. Uh, he, he tells us right here over in the book of Isaiah, the eagle eye prophet tells us that we need to start leaving things behind. He said the former things leave behind. I bet you a dime to a dollar this morning, if everybody in here brought something from your past with you that's not good for you. Somebody came this morning, Andy, with, 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 with something hard-pressed on their mind or in their heart that happened yesterday or two weeks ago or whatever, that they brought it to church, not with the intentions of being delivered, but they wanted to hang on because they think it looks good on them. You've seen people who always walk around angry. People who always walk around with a stinking stint on them. They, they got perfume on, but they stink. They don't, stink, they don't stink in the natural. I'm talking about the supernatural. They spirit stinks because they're out of divine direction of God. God has preordained and ordered some things, and, and, and you refuse to oblige God. It's amazing here how we all in the new year have choices, options, possibilities, solutions. We have all these things before us, and you know what stops us from moving forward? Quit giving the devil so many awards. He's getting all the Grammys, the Emmys. He's getting everything out of your life because you're not succeeding. When it's actually you who are stopping you. A lot of you, let me tell you this, and this is going to be a news break right here. Check this out. A lot of y'all, the devil not even working at you. I know you thought you were better than that, but you're not. Because he don't waste time with people who are already on his side. And when you start doubting God, then you're worshiping Satan. That's the only two ways in the world, Minister Tench. Either you're doubting God or you're riding with him or you're riding with Satan or you're ignoring Satan. But you can't have both. You can't say, I love God and then I'm worried all the time if God going to do it. Don't worry. Thank God. If he do it, great. If not, fine. 
We hold on to too many things. And the only thing the Bible say hold on to is God's unchanging hand. But you're still trying to hold on to an old relationship that you had in high school. You, you're still wishing that Lewis is going to find you. Still wishing and hoping for a car. Hoping for the big house. You're hoping for every intangible except the intangible, which is the Holy Ghost. All you got to do, it don't cost us nothing to receive this gift, but we don't want it. It's been gift wrapped for us through blood. A bow tie has been tied on it, and we still don't want the gift of the Holy Ghost. We, we want every other intangible because we have deemed in our mindset through our eyes, that these things mean we are successful. The stock market crash proved to us, Sister Danielle, that money is not everything. I'm going to tell you this too. It proved to us how strong our culture is. We might get blocked on this one, but that's okay. We weren't killing ourselves when the stock market crashed. I haven't seen or read that thing about one black person killing themselves during the stock market crash. Because it didn't affect us. We didn't have no money. We weren't losing money because we weren't really investing money. We didn't have the money to invest. It was all the people who had the money, people of other, another color. They were the ones jumping out of buildings. And I'm thinking today, if, we, if I had, how many single parent mothers who to this day still don't know how they made it over. What happened if they would have just gave up and jumped out of building? You can't tell me that God doesn't prepare and equip you with the resources you need before you go through whatever you're going through. I refuse to believe. I don't care how. And, and you've seen people who tell you stuff about them, and they want to, they, they are so dramatic. I mean, just unbelievably just. Man, was silly. Got a leak. Okay. Oh, the leak in the kitchen right over the stove. Okay, and the leak now is burning the eyes on the stove. And I'm thinking the next thing he's going to say is God is coming back December 13th. Because he has set the whole story up just like that. We, we don't understand in life that we have choices. You choose this day who you might serve. See, that's the problem right there. Minister Chisholm, we don't, never, we don't never worry about, we always worry about choosing what we want instead of getting things in order. God's a God of priority. God says the first thing you need to choose is not what type of house you desire in life or not what type of car you want or how many people you want in your wedding. What you need to choose is me first. We stank it up from the beginning because we got a school with no principle. So therefore, when you don't have a principle, you don't have structure. And you wonder why your, 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 your life is just meandering and, and just winging because you're not truly connected. You don't have nobody to guide you. You're guiding yourself. And truth be told, you're scared to tell somebody, hey, man, I'm lost. If I ask right now, Andy, how many people in here this morning spiritually are lost? How many have raised their hand? Not many. I'm not going to ask. But it's the truth. How many of y'all been going to church all this time and you still struggling with the same enemy? Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. I pre thank, thank you, Sister Chief. I pre we got some who raised their hand. And I know y'all going to raise y'all. Raise your hand. I know y'all in the band. I'm I have to watch them people in band. Them are guys, but I know they, the spirit all, you know, that, that's what, okay. I love them, but, you know, I'd always raise your hand in the band. But you struggle with a lot of things because you, I don't want to say like struggling, you have adapted struggling. Because you've been doing this so long. You succumb to it. And don't let somebody say, I'm sick of being here. 
And, and, and I'm tired of being irritated by this. I'm ready to move and do something different. It'll shake up the whole world. It'll shake up your whole life, your whole house. Just because you want different. Just because this year your prayer wasn't what you wanted in the, in, in, in the natural. It was God bless me spiritually. Show me the way, God. And if it's praying three times a day, see, we don't want that. I know that because half the people ain't even on the fast. I know that because half of them ain't even coming to prayer. But you won't. Hey, let me tell you something this morning. When the Bible says God is not a man, he shall lie. No, the son of man, he shall repent. Don't play with God. What God is trying to tell you, don't treat me like you treat your fellow man. My eyes are in every place. You're asking God for much, but you don't want to give. The Bible declares to who much is given, much is required. Yet we totally ignore that because we refuse to hear from God. If you promise to start letting God run your life by having a relationship with him and start hearing, I promise you your life will change. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to move from the Beverly Hill buildings, the Beverly Hill buildings up on down street, on, you know, move down on, on Lenox Road, but you'll have something greater. You have a peace. I have a peace now that I've never had before. I, I, I have a peace. I'm, I'm so appreciative of whatever my wife cooked. I've always been like that, but I'm, I'm more appreciative now. Thank you. How, how many of y'all, you don't, I don't want you to raise your hand for fear of starting violence in here, but, but, but how many of y'all tell your, your wife, Thank you. Or your mother, thank you when you cook, when they cook. How, how many of y'all say it? I say it every time. How many of y'all, thank you. I appreciate you using your services and your skills to bless me. We, we don't do it. You know, we, we're going into this year and, you know, you don't even want people to really hear your story. You know, people always say, I got a new, new regime coming, a new attitude with a new year. But we don't want to tell people our story. We show people the nice things, the family photos. We'll talk about our career path, what, what, what we want to do there. We, we might even mention our first love. You know, we, we'll talk about things like that, but, but, but I'm talking about what is your real story? Yeah, most of us have chapters we'd rather not share with anyone. That story. That's the story, Sister Quanda, that I want to hear. I want to hear the story that you don't want to tell nobody because that's where you need deliverance. I don't need to hear what you've already conquered. Tell me how much you hate yourself or tell me how much you and your spouse fighting there. Tell me how your kids got to be somebody else's kids because ain't no way God could have gave you kids like that. Tell me some things that, that I really need to know. Let's dig and dive. Let's have a party on something that we can truly overcome. Don't give me your family photos and they're 10 years old. No, I, I don't want to see that. I, I don't want to see that. Some of you have ended up in a place you don't want to be. Tell me that story. Tell me I'm, I'm disgruntled at home. Tell me I, I don't know how my world turned so quickly. I, I thought I had everything under control. I don't know how so the quantum my world just, just, just gone with the wind. You know, I'm like a soap opera now. Has the world turned? I need general hospital because my mind gone. You know, I want to hear those type of stories. I want to hear the story where you tell me, People hurt you. I want to hear that kind of story, Andy, because that's how we move forward. People hurt me. Tell me the truth on how you compromised your values. Yeah, there we go. How you compromise your values. I went against the grain. I went against what God said because I was feeling this way. So I went out. And felt like if I can go out and have a cocktail with the girls and, and whatever, I feel better. And you always end up in the bed with somebody you don't even know they know. And then you want to turn around and say, people hurt me. Some people are gluttons for punishment. Because if you weren't, you wouldn't keep doing the same thing. I, I look at people with credit like that. 
I said, when your credit bad and it stay bad, it's one thing if it gets bad, that's fine. But if it stay bad, then you like punishment. Come on, I mean, just, just re- you don't have to have all the money. God ain't going to give you all the money in the world to get out of the, the storm you put yourself in. You don't appreciate it then. You'll get right back in that storm. He said, you're going to work out of it like you worked in it, and I'm going to give you grace as you work through it. Let this time and these patients have a perfect work, and that way right now we can continue to move, and you continue to use the divine directions. And after a while, not only will you have a good name in the club, you have a good name with your credit. Oh, they don't like this. But it's the truth. You are where you are because that's where you want to be. I had to come to grips with that. William, you are where you are because you want to be there. You like being there. You like wallowing in that. And then you like bringing up and cooking your own meal called self-pity. Yes. You like self-pity. You start telling yourself, oh, that's okay. I grew up like this. I came up in the gutter. I I came up in the projects. I set and said, yeah, self-pity. Just keep on piling on. Then you got horns and people wearing birthday hats in your self-pity party. And next thing you know, you so far down, getting up ain't on your mind. You don't even think about your credit no more. You don't even think about, I can have a family. You don't even think about what it looks like to be healed. You don't even think about I can be delivered. All you look at is my pity party. See? See how many people I got in my pity party? Yeah. All these people at my pity party. And I ain't going nowhere. But I lied to myself in the beginning, 2024, saying this year going but I never devised a plan. Think about it. I have, I'm church of God in Christ, born and fed. We were bringing church in at midnight on New Year's like no other. Can't nobody bring New Year's service in like church of God in Christ. Got it down to the T. And I wonder everybody shouting and going around the church Speaking in tongues and high-fiving, then going back to shouting, then everybody eat together. And nobody ever devised a plan. We have succumbed to bodily exercise. It profits a man little to utilize bodily exercise and shout all over the church. And we don't have to just keep it a New Year's. It's every Sunday. Some churches you go to, God bless them. They shout every Sunday, but life has never changed. Let me tell you, if you're going to a church and you're not being challenged in that church, you need to check yourself and say, I'm more valuable than this. I need to go. Because I ain't going to be getting a car every week. I don't need to be hearing about that every week. I don't need to hear about manifestation every week. I need to know how to get saved and how to stay saved. Somebody say, yeah. I need to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, fire baptized. I need to learn how to get out of these situations. I need to learn how to hear divine direction. And a lot of times, it won't come like you think it should. He ain't speaking while you're walking. You ain't that anointed. You're walking and God just out the sky. That's Hollywood. You're not that annoying. You had not paid enough time. You can't even fast 21 days. Why would God take time out to come and be in person with you when you don't want to be in person with him? No, he leaves you grace. And I know somebody out there disputing that right now. Put it in the thing. We can have a conversation on it scripture-wise. But it's the truth. He didn't talk to everybody like that in your life. He talked to certain people like that. The rest of us has to come through our mindset, which is stemmed off our relationship with him. So people who never get that, now they become atheists. And they say there is no God because they never heard from God or because God didn't do what they wanted to, when they wanted to, how they wanted to. If he would have did it when you wanted it, how you wanted it, and where you wanted it, then it wouldn't be no God. You would think you control God. You don't control no narrative. God takes and puts the initiative in your life and then tells you, now go off of this initiative. You don't have nothing to do with what God do. God has everything to do with what you do. If he would do kings like that, why you don't think he'll do you like that? We're rooks. We're pawns. James, why do we think that we got control of God? It, it makes no sense. 
There's somebody in here this morning who feel like you have did things in 23 that you can't undo in 24. See, we don't like to talk about these things, coach. We don't like to amen that for fear of somebody going to, but the person sitting next to you don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in or probably don't have an answer for your problem. You, if you really want to get in touch with God, you got to become indignant. You got to, you got to shout when ain't nobody else shouting. Run when ain't nobody else running. Scream when ain't nobody else screaming. Throw your hand up or whatever when ain't nobody else. You don't have to already be moved with the crowd. This ain't no disco or whatever. No, you do it when God touch you. You can do it at home in the washroom. Go, oh, Jesus, you going to do it. Whole family looking crazy. And then you're the only one looking insane. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. What's wrong with you? God is moving. How you know? Because I know. What did he say? I know. Your future's unwritten, and some of you are struggling. You don't have a vision. You're doing the same thing now. You, don't make, you haven't made plans to get better, or you haven't made plans to better what you're doing. Your future's unwritten. 24 is unwritten in your life. You still whining off of 23 because this didn't work for me in 23. I didn't get the promotion in 23. My business didn't kick off in 23. So what? Look at it and say, God has been germinating that thing. He's been letting the roots grow deep. I needed to learn some more things before he put me out front. It ain't that God forgot you. He said he'll never leave you. Why are you sitting up here? Oh, my business set you. Man, pick yourself up by the bootstraps. Look back and say, God, keep watering it. Maybe I ain't been fertilizing it enough. Maybe I started depending on self too much. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, God, I'm sorry for getting in front of you. Yeah, going around God, getting in front of him, then looking at him when you ride by. You know how y'all do on the road. You know how they do on the road, Coach. Get around people, somebody going through, so get, and get next to them and look at them. Then drive on. Oh, hey, how many of y'all know? Hey, raise your hand and put it down right quick. Everybody's done it. Quit tripping. I've done it. I've done it going to church, trying to get the church running late. And somebody pulled out slow in front of me. And I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad Walter Hawkins was on. <laughs> yeah, if I would have had a little baby on, it would have been on. Some of y'all too stuck up. Y'all know about these people more than I do. Let, let me say this right here. I bet right today, if you really calculate where you are in life and take flesh out of it, you will see that you have more victories than losses. I know you ain't getting what you want when you want it, but you look back and say, I have more victories right now than I do losses. Let me tell you, God will let your nose get right here, but he'll never let you go up under. Now, you ain't leaving until he say so. He wants to see how long you can tread water. He wants to see how long you can stay out there and keep moving, even if you ain't moving nowhere. I'm going to stay up, God. I'm going to keep trying, God. I'm going to keep throwing my rod out there. That's what I love about fishing. You don't know the, you know they're out there, but you don't know where they are, and you just keep throwing. And every time you throw, every time you throw, and then you read, all you're saying is about by faith. I put my faith on a hook. God gonna let some bite it. And I just came, then you bring it up and, oh, I thought I had something, that, and it was something that bit it, and you pulled too quick. And you brought it out the water, and there's nothing now, now, but a hook and a little piece of your bait. And you say, see, I thought I had something. What you do then? You keep fishing. And you have to do what? Wait. You have to wait on God to hit that hook. Your promise is out there. You just have to wait on God to connect with it. And when he connects with it, and then he put that thing on that, that fish on that bait, he'll, he'll let you know because it's going to move. You, you don't have to guess True fishermen don't guess. They know. They make sure that line good and kind of tight. So when God say, okay, I got it on now, and he put it and say, you can take it now, that boom, then that thing go up on the water, pull it. Now you got your prize. Now that's fishing 101 for the day by Pastor Wynn. Uh, that, that, that there'll be an offering bucket in the back. 
Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart deviseth his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. A man's heart deviseth, which means plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Then it comes back in Proverbs 37 and 23 and says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now watch this, but this is what we miss, coach. And it says then, and, and he what? Delighteth. In his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he devises it in his way. That means a, a good man say, well, God, wherever you take me, that's where I'm going. Whatever you have me to do, that's what I'm doing. That's where I am. Quickly, I want to go over to first Samuel, and then we got to get out of here. I'm through. I got to go to another church. Through Samuel 23. Verses 1 through 3. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Got some Bible reading for you. Lord, thank you. And when David was told, look to the Philistines and fighting against Kaliah and are looting the threshing floors. Thus, <laughs> looting the threshing floors. He inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go? That's it. We can go home. David see the enemy, the Philistines, going into this city in Judah, getting ready to tear up the city. Now, two things are wrong here. Because this should never take place because, because Saul has the ring to make sure that his army protects Judah. But Saul has gotten caught up trying to find David. So while Saul and his army trying to find David, David is hearing from God. <laughs> Woo! When your enemy trying to dog you and, and disdain you and put you under the ground, when this devil trying to suffocate you, understand, keep on listening, baby. God is going to be talking, and he's going to make your enemy go around and around and around. They're going to miss you. They're going to come close and don't even know you there because you're trying to hear from God. The Bible says right here now in 1 Samuel that, that David was listening to God. He's he listening to God while Saul trying to find him and kill him. Saul's job with his army was to protect the borders. But Saul said, forget the borders. I'm going after David. Have you ever had an enemy that hated you so they didn't care what else was going on? Their whole agenda was trying to get you. Well, if you don't raise your hand, you probably ain't been saved for real. Because those who've been saved for real, you've had somebody who was trying to get you, trying to tear up everything you had built, talking bad about you, putting your name in the dirt, kicking it, then putting it in the toilet. You ain't never had nobody like that. That means you ain't never living for Christ because your enemies are greater when you got Christ on your side. See, David had Christ with him. Yeah, he had Christ with him. Now, he going now here to this city to try to stop all this thrashing. This, they're going out here to stop all these people doing all this stuff on the threshing floor. Look at what he says right here. He says right here, shall I go and attack these Philistines? Now, coach right there, we know because we study the Bible. When he say, shall I go? He didn't say, should I? He said, shall I? See, there's a difference between shall and should. Shall means I'm ready if you say it. Should mean I doubt it. A lot of us think we shalling, but we really shouldn't. We sitting over here thinking, uh -huh, don't call on me to do that. Let me live like I live. Don't put no adversary before me. Don't put no stumbling blocks and no hurdles in front of me. I'm scared of mountains. Okay, well, you over here. Should I be shall? I want to be over here with the shall, not the should. And David said, shall I go? See, because the name Philistines ain't scared David. Historically looking, minister, see, the Philistines have already been defeated by David, one man. If they knew David was coming, they probably would have fled, but they didn't know. Sometimes God wants you to be the surprise. But you run your mouth too much. You want everybody to know everything. I'm getting $7,000 back on my taxes. 
And what you're doing, you're trying to show out for the 7,000 on the taxes. And all you're doing are getting anteaters. You know what anteaters are? People who come up there, give me, give me, give me, give me. Now, anteaters spread. They spread the word. Girl, you know Charlene got seven grand back. You better get her. She'll help you pay that. Guy. She'll help you get that gas bill. You know Charlene, hey, Charlene got 7,000 back. Hey, get some, get some money from her. She'll give you some, she'll, she'll give you some stamps now because she got the money. She don't need the stamps. Bible says it right here in the text. He says it so, so candidly. He said, shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered him. Now, here we go right here. Cole. This, this right here, we're going to go home after this. I got to get out of here. We're going to go. He, God tells him this right here. This is amazing. Shall I go attack? God said, go and attack the Philistines and save Goliath. I thought I had more people at church. I thought I had somebody who asked God, God, what you want me to do? And they gave me an answer. They did. They would be one standing up saying yes. I learned how to do hard things. I learned how to listen. He tells David, go. He says right here in the text, go attack the Philistines and save. Now, when he says save, that is already giving David the victory. He's saying save Kaliah. Go and save. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. I've already conquered them. So they bloodline, I'm not fearing they bloodline. I just need permission from my father, which are in heaven, because I don't move unless I get divine direction from God. Jesus. He says, go. Go. You need to start asking God for all your enemies. Now, some of your enemies might not be people. Some of your enemies might be mental things. Some of your, your enemies might be past things, your, the way your upbringing was. Uh, some things might be a fear of. Pray to God so he can tell you, uh, go. But when God says go now, you got to be ready to move. You can't stand still and God say go and you'd be like, really? No, God, go, go, I'm moving right now, baby, left, right, left. Because when God say go, what he's really saying is, I've already made a way. If you be obedient, God has already made a way of escape. But we're so busy looking at the problem, we can't hear the principle. He say go. I made a way. Go and kill them all. Save the city in Judah. Save the, the city. Now, look what it says here. He said, but David's men said to him. Now, see, that's why you don't tell everybody your stuff. Watch what David's men say. These cats have been riding with David all this time. Look what they say. These men said to him, here in Judah, we are afraid. That's why you can't tell everybody your conversation you have with God. Because other people don't understand it because they ain't been where you've been. If they ain't been where you've been, they don't deserve to get what you got. Now, they come back and, and they try to dampen the party. You know, when you say God told you to do something, the first thing somebody say, you can't afford that. I feel like preaching. You, you, you can't afford that. Or this man called, he liked me. He ain't going to date you. You got too many kids. And, 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 and as you know, it, the people who was a part of your, the soldiers that were riding with you are the ones now that are deterring you. That's what happened right here with David in the text. It says it right here. He said, but his men said that they were afraid. How much more then if we should go to Kelly against the Philistine forces? Then they asked David, why should we go against them? We're scared. Once again, David inquired of the Lord and said, Lord answered him. This time, God was more specific. He said, go down to Kelly, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. David heard them. But they didn't move David. David said, wait a minute. Let me go back to the father. He goes back to God and asks God again. And God said, go down. And I'm going to put him in your hand. I am. I am. The great I am is whatever you need when you need it. That's what he is. He said it right here to David. Go down to Kela, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. 
So David and his men went to Caleb, fought the Philistines, and carried off their livestock. Wait a minute. So now, how can the men who are scared still follow David? Because they know the anointing on him. They see the anointing in his life. They see that if we followed him, if he going, we got to go. We ain't got no choice. Now, they believe in David as David believes in God. So you have to make sure you be careful of the leadership that you follow. Because there's a lot of leadership out here that has very nice bells and whistles, but has no anointing. They can sing and shout and quote scripture and harm it to death, but they ain't living Christ-like. Yeah, look how they treat people. They treat people in the car. That ain't God-like. Look how Jesus treated people. Treated people like he wanted to be treated, like they were his brothers and sisters. He tells him again, go ahead, go down now. And then he tells him the reward. He goes down there and kills all these people. And then David and them took all the livestock. Somebody shout divine direction. Not only did they win the battle, they took the livestock and God kept all the way. He kept the enemy at bay while David went in and did what God had ordained him to do. Because if you're ordained, it should be easier to be obedient. So when you see people in church who are not obedient, they haven't been truly ordained. Not, not necessarily to be a pastor, but ordained as a saint. See, we get it confused. We think because we come and give our life to Christ that that's the end, but that's the beginning. Yeah, we think because we get baptized that we're good now. Somebody lied and told you that to get more people on their church roll. We're not here. No, no, no. You got to love God and connect with him to the point to where you trust him all your way, all your heart, mind, and soul. When, when you start trusting God like that, that means now you're ready to hear the divine direction that God has, not only for you, but everybody that's connected to you and how they are going to be blessed because you was the one who listened and obeyed the divine direction that God gave you. You don't know how many people are going to be blessed because you are obedient to the divine direction of God. You have no idea. But I tell you this morning, I don't know what all God got for me this year. But I know now my 24 is going to be better than my 23. I, I know now, I know right now, I got a new normal. I don't get mad like I used to. I don't handle problems like I used to. I forgive quicker now. I don't hold them. I don't forgive and then put that thing I don't forget. I'm, that's not ordained. Because the Bible said, God, forgive, forget, and throw it away. But we want to, I forgive, but I can't forget. By Satan, I serve a God that is tough to serve, but the reward is great. We're all living for a death. We, we live in for death, meaning that there's another place for me. I want to make sure where I'm going is to heaven. And he gives you every chance in the world for that. And you can't get before him and have an excuse and say, my sister made me go to hell. My husband made me go to hell. I, I, was, I was good. I didn't see until I was around him. My mama, if she wouldn't have been out in them streets, I would have been better. The welfare system caused my mind to become traumatized, and I ain't been right since. Not so. Not so. All you have to do is make up in your mind that today my life changed. Whatever was behind me is now behind me. I'm closing the door on 23 and all the negative things that came with it. 
I'm availing myself and making myself available unto you, Father. Come into my life. Give me a new song to sing. Give me a new prayer life. Give me a joy that I hadn't had since I was nine years old. Give me a new joy. I'm sick of perpetrating the fraud, lying to people, telling them I'm saved. When truth be told, I don't even know if I, if I believe. I have to ask myself that all the time. Lord, if you're God, why am I feeling like this? And he said, that's the test for today. How you're going to take the test depends on where you are. God don't have to grade your test for you to know if you passed or failed. You know it. We, we don't have to go, I'm waiting on God. You know now if you die, whether you will go to heaven or hell. Seriously, you know right now. We, coach, we don't have to go around and, and, and fact check everybody. LT, we don't have to do that. You know where you're going right now. You know if you still got hatred in your heart. You know if it's hard for you to forgive. You know if you don't believe in God when things go wrong. You know if your anger and your attitude is worse than your anointing. It stops today. It stops today. I don't want you to look at no resources. I don't want you to look at what you have or what you do not have. I don't want you to look at any of that. All I want you to do is make up in your mind, today is the first day of the rest of my life. As we stand. Amen. Put your hands together. God bless you. You've just had an experience with champions, and we are so glad that you tuned in today. Let's continue to honor God through our commitment to give. There are four ways to give. You can give online via Cash App at dollar sign Champions for Christ. Next, you can give online at www.championsforchristiam.org. Lastly, you can give during service or on our mobile app available in the Apple and Google Play stores. Please be sure to tune in each and every week to our online broadcast. Encourage others to tune in with you. Remember, we are champions because we are champions for Christ.